Hey guys, today in this video I'm going to show you how I was able to draw Michael Jackson in black and white in Photoshop. When I start a portrait, I usually do a line drawing, a basic line drawing. I'm not going to spend too much time on one spot. I'm going to try to get the, the entire face down within the first, maybe within the first 10 minutes of the painting. And you want to get the entire face down so you can start to check the proportions and then make changes as you go along. I found out that it's a lot easier to correct your mistakes than to try to get it perfect the first time. And that's why it's really good to practice doing portraits in pencil because you can erase. And if you use ink, you might, you might cripple yourself and you might be afraid to make a mark because you might think, oh wait, I need to be perfect. So if you want to practice getting better at checking your proportions and really correcting your mistakes, I would recommend you do some portraits in pencil in your sketchbook, you know, or dedicate a whole sketchbook for portraits in pencil and practice using that because those skills, what you learn from the pencil sketches will transfer to the Photoshop, okay? I'm just trying to get the basic darks and the basic lights. Once again, I'm not wasting too much time in one spot. I'm trying to work on the entire painting because I want the whole thing to look good. I don't just want one part of the painting to look good. And uh, it's always good to flip your painting every now and then to check your proportions. When you flip your painting horizontally, it gives you a fresh look. You look at it from a different perspective so you can see a lot more mistakes. A lot of things you wouldn't necessarily catch otherwise and it's also helpful to flip the painting upside down if you want to I used to do that a lot in the beginning but I haven't really been doing that recently and it might help if I actually do that if I would have done that with this painting I might have completed it a lot sooner okay so back to the drawing and right now I'm just checking the proportions just making sure everything checks out and usually I measure the distance between the eyes make sure generally the distance between both eyes is one eye length and not everybody's gonna have that same proportion you know that's the average proportion some people's eyes are closer so you wanna observe the person you are drawing and make sure that the proportions do match some people's eyes might be further apart some people's eyes might be closer together but generally most people's eyes are one eye length apart or I don't know if it's an eye width but you get my point and I usually check the distance between I usually check to see where the ears line up if you're looking at a person's face straight on the ear will line up with the bottom of the nose and that's not always the case because you're not always gonna look at the person's face straight on usually you will look at the face from an angle so the ear is not always gonna be aligned with the bottom of the nose and you want to see where it checks out so you can document it properly and that's basically that's a basic overview on checking proportions it can get a lot more complicated than that and the, the more time you spend checking proportions the more accurate the painting is going to be the more the more of a likeness you're going to get you know at this stage in the painting I'm beginning to work on the eyes, the nose, the distinct facial features because I've reached a point where I am satisfied with the proportions and I am satisfied with the basic foundation that I've laid down. So now it's okay for me to go and work on those details. I can actually work on the mouth for as long as I want to right now because I already have the foundation down. And usually when you paint these portraits, most people don't have perfectly symmetrical faces. Actually, nobody has a perfectly symmetrical face. And you definitely want to capitalize on that because if you can capture the asymmetrical qualities of the person's face, you will definitely get his likeness. It gets to a point where it becomes really easy to capture a person's likeness if you know how to really observe look for the asymmetrical qualities of the person's face 
both eyes are never going to perfectly align. I mean, you can get really, really close, but if you want to go down to a microscopic level, no two eyes are perfectly aligned together. You know, a lot of times one person's eye will be higher than the other. A lot of times one person's ear will be higher. You want to check to see if the ears align together or if one is higher than the other. If one's higher, it definitely gives you more information to create an accurate painting. Um, and usually when I work on these, I generally tend to spend the most time, the most of my time on the face because that's what I want the viewer to look at. So I'm not going to spend 30 minutes working on the, on the person's shirt because I really don't care much about, I really don't care about the shirt, but it doesn't mean that I'm not going to paint it at all. You want it to look good enough but you don't want it to look better than the face because the face is the focal point and you want the viewer to look at the face unless you really want the focal point to be the shirt then in that case knock yourself out you know but I'm guessing that's not going to be the case and uh, let me just talk about some technical aspects of this painting right now I can't remember the size of it but you generally want to work in 300 dpi if you're going to use photoshop you want to use 300 dpi and um, that's that's the resolution actually 300 pixels per inch i think i can't remember but i'm going to write it down in the description okay and uh generally i like to start on the gray canvas or if i'm going to do black and white i generally like to start on the white canvas and just use a 30% opacity brush and do a quick outline like I said earlier do a quick outline and then I usually do a quick value study on the same layer with the quick outline and then when I'm satisfied with that I can go to a new layer and then work on the details because Photoshop is very forgiving it's really easy for me to change the proportions to erase create a new layer and all that stuff and right now this is something I like to do I like to add a texture onto my paintings to make them look more traditional to give them a more realistic view you know you want the person to look at it and think it's an act you want the person to recognize it as a drawing as a piece of art and not just a computer generated image and the canvas texture really helps with that so right now I'm just adjusting the texture to really align with the painting and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint over it so the whole thing can really look unified. You don't want the you don't just want the texture sitting on top of your painting. You want you want to integrate the texture properly with the brush strokes and everything. You want everything to look cohesive. If you know what I mean. Um at this stage I'm basically just adding the last touches because I'm pretty satisfied with everything pretty confident with it and I think I got the proportions down so I can actually just add my own artistic touch because no two portraits are going to be alike you want yours to be unique and right now I think the unique aspect of mine would be the brush strokes and the textures and it takes a lot of experimentation for you to find your own artistic touch you're gonna to have to do a lot of trial and error a lot of failed attempts and that's okay that's completely fine okay but after a while you're gonna realize that certain things work better for you and certain things don't find the things that work and keep doing them and find the things that don't work and stop doing them it's really that simple guys and uh, I'm getting pretty close to the end here so I think I'm getting ready to sign the painting. I'm just working on the last minute details. Right now, I'm not really making a huge difference. This stage of the game, I'm just adding last minute details here and there. It's, it might not really make a huge difference, but it helps. It just makes me feel better. It just makes me know that I, I did the best I could because you want to do the best you can. And uh, sometimes I'm actually going to go back and make some of the edges look fuzzy because I don't want every single... I don't want every single edge in the painting to look crisp. Definitely don't want every part of the painting to look crisp. I want some parts to look blurry, some parts to look more blended, and then other parts, I want other parts to look sharp. So that way it creates interest, it creates variety, and then you can guide the viewer's eye to the focal point. 
and generally the focal point will have sharper edges and the subordinate parts will have the more blurry edges, the more blended edges. You know, you want to juxtapose between soft and hard edges. And uh, what else? Let me see. Yep, see, there we go. Right now, I'm blending some parts, making them fuzzy so the viewer can look directly at the face. That's what I want the viewer to look at first, the face, okay? And thank you guys for watching the video. Um, I really appreciate it. If you like the video, go ahead and comment, subscribe, share, all the good stuff, okay? And I'll see you guys later.